So let's say uh, you're walking home one night down some dark alley and suddenly this red guy blocks your path and you sense yeah, you sense his hostility, like an aura of hostility around him, and you want to, you know, not be forced into encountering him, but you kind of have no choice because he's already speed walking towards you. So he's there up in your face, and he tells you, "I need you to find an augmented weight vector A, such that um, it can be used to find some discriminant function G of X." that can best like linearly separate two classes of data, right? So, and he says, give me your best algorithm or I'm gonna take your wallet. What do you do? Do you kind of just shrivel up and say, uh, what if we just use the, the perceptron criterion? If you said something like that to the red guy, He'd scoff in your face and say, get out of here with that garbage. That's not good enough. These are the streets. So what you need to give him instead is what's called the sum of squared error criterion function. And its gradient looks like this. This is um, a better way, basically, to find um, a weight vector A that will fit all your needs. But you don't really need to know this part. Uh, what you really need to know <laughs> is <laughs> It really, what you really need to know is that it can be expressed as this, where this big Y is uh, this all all of your data, um, and I'll explain what that means hopefully a little better in a second. Once I can write this down, because I can't multitask. So, this big Y represents all of your samples of data, not just the ones that are mis misclassified or classified. Um, the perceptron criterion, um, it's, it uses the sigma, which involves um, y, uh, all, all your all your misclassified samples, right? So this thing only uses your misclassified samples to get a better and better estimate of a weight vector, but this one uses um, all of your samples, the classified and misclassified ones. Um, and that set of all of your samples is this big Y right here. So big Y is um, all samples. A is what you want, the augmented weight, vec weight vector that you want. And B is an arbitrarily chosen vector of positive constants that you're going to use to solve for A, basically. So what that looks like is um, if, so the, the idea is you can, I'm not sure if it's entirely accurate to think of it this way, but it helps me to think of um, the sum of squared error criterion function, J sub S as a sort of measure of error. Um, actually, where this gradient comes from is uh, a function that's more like properly defined. Um, I mean, you, you can more clearly see like the error part of it. Um, so what that looks like is this. So J sub S of A is basically it's this and where that comes from is so you want to you start this problem by defining that y times a is equal to b 
and then you define an error vector e, which is the difference of these two. If we start with this problem, then if you want to find an a that satisfies some b, then there's going to be like more than one solution. And it's hard to find one that's ideal, right? But if we define this new error vector e, then we can make the problem easier to solve in the sense that it will we can arrive at like only one solution, which is um, if we find define the error like this as e, if we can find an a such that e is minimized, we'll have found our answer, right? So this is error. This is the error that we're working with. And this is the squared er error. This can be rewritten as this. And that's why it's called the sum of squared error criterion function. If you take the gradient of that, then you get uh, what I drew here earlier. in this Rugrats green shape here. So this is what we're going to be using. So going back to how to use to actually use that thing. Um, <laughs> so we the objective again, now that you see that uh, this function represents error, is that we want to minimize the error, right? We want to minimize the magnitude of the error. So to do that, then let's set gradient of j of s equal to zero, which is the same as setting uh, definition of it equal to zero. After you expand this out and do some algebra, you'll see that it simplifies to this. And then isolating for A, you can get this. So this um, y transpose multiplied with y, the product of this is inverse. And then all that together is multiplied by the b vector. So you can express the weight vector that you ultimately want in this form. But um, this is kind of a pain to write out all the time. So people like to replace this part with what's called the pseudo inverse of y, which is like a y with a plus subscript. This is the definition of a pseudo inverse. So um, a pseudo inverse is needed here because, um, well, uh, I guess you can think of a pseudo inverse as, it's like an inverse, um, except you can only take an inverse of like a square matrix, but often we'll be dealing with uh, like this product will, like what what you need might not what you need to take the inverse of might not necessarily be square. So like it might be like m by n and m is not necessarily equal to n. Um, and if that's the case, you need to you need to take its pseudo inverse. So once you take the pseudo inverse and multiply it by b, uh, which is some set of constants that you choose randomly, then you should be getting your solution vector a. But um, there is uh, an important note I should mention concerning the calculation of that. 